Hi, I'm Geraldo, a PhD student at the Safari Research Group, and today I'm going to talk about our work type Polynesia, enabling high performance and energy efficiency hybrid transaction analytical databases with hardware software for design. This work was led by Amorali Buraman, who is now at Google. Before we start, I'm going to give a brief summary of this talk. Many applications today need to perform real-time data analysis, meaning that they need to execute data analysis with the most recent version of the data. Such applications often use a hybrid transactional analytical processing system, or HTAP. An ideal HTAP system should provide three properties. First, data freshness and data consistency. Second, should allow for workload-specific optimizations. And third, should provide performance isolation to transactional and analytical workloads. We extensively analyze state-of-the-art HTAP systems, and we observe that they fail to achieve all the three HTAP properties. Our key idea to solve such an issue is to divide the HTAP system into processing islands, one for transactional and another for analytical workloads. Each island has a set of optimized hardware resources and algorithms. By enabling processing island, we can perform workload-specific optimization to transactional and analytical workloads while in providing performance isolation. We leverage our key idea to implement Polynesia, a novel hardware software co-design HTAP system that implements custom algorithms and hardware to reduce the cost of maintaining data freshness and consistency in HTAP systems and exploit processing memory to elevate the data movement caused by analytical workloads. We extensively evaluate Polynesia against three state-of-the-art HTAP systems, and we observe that it increases, increases transactional analytical throughput by 1.7 times and 3.7 times, and also reduces the energy consumption by 48%. So here's the outline for this talk. First, I'm going to give a brief introduction of HTAP systems. Then I'm going to talk about the limitations of state-of-the-art HTAP systems. Third, I'm going to give an overview of, of our proposal called Polynesia. Then I'm going to talk about Polynesia's update propagation mechanism consistency mechanism and analytical, and analytical engine. Then I'm going to give a brief overview of our evaluation results and then conclude. So let's get started with, with the introduction of our uh, 20 step systems. Recently, in many different application domains, they have, there has been an explosive interest in performance data analytics on the most recent version of the data or real-time data analysis. Self-driving cars are a major example of these applications. Self-driving cars ingest a large volume of data from various sensors and typically have some sort of learning model that is applied to, to the ingested data to make in the field decisions. Other applications that require real-time data analysis include fraud detection, personalized recommendations, and healthcare monitoring. Therefore, for this application, it is critical to perform data analysis, analytics with the most recent version of the data, since the value of the data diminishes over time. Traditionally, database management system uses two separate systems to perform transactions and uh, perform transactions and analytics over some data. This creates an issue since data migration between transactional and analytical database management systems can take hours to days depending on the data volume. To solve this issue and support real-time data analysis, prior works have proposed a hybrid transaction analytical processing system or HTAP. As the name indicate, indicates, such a system has the ability to perform both transactions and analytics concurrently. In order to allow for real-time data analysis, a HTAP system should provide three properties. First, a HTAP system needs to provide workload-specific optimizations, meaning that uh, both transaction and analytical workloads should benefit from their own specific optimizations. Second, the HTAP system needs to guarantee that analytical workloads access the most up-to-date version of the data, while ensuring a consistency view of data to the entire system. Third, the latency and throughput of transactional analytical workloads should be as if they are running in isolation. However, as we are going to show next, it's really challenging achieving all the three desired HTAP properties. So I'm, next, I'm going to show the limitations of state-of-the-art HTAP systems. We study two major types of HTAP systems single instance HTAP designs, where both analytics and transactional work on a single copy of the data, and multiple instance designs, where each workload work on different copies of the data. We find that neither type can achieve all of the three desired HTAP properties. Specifically, we observe two key problems. First, the data freshness and consistency mechanism state-of-the-art HTAP systems apply are costly to implement and cause a drastic reduction in both transactional and analytical throughput. 
Second, the HTAP system fails to provide performance isolation because of high contention and main memory. Next, I will going to show the limitations of state-of-the-art HTAP systems in details. We start with a single, insta single instance HTAP system. One of the major problems with single instance uh, HTAP system is high cost, is, it's a, their high cost of, con of maintaining consistency. There are two major mechanisms to maintain data consistency in a single instance HTAP system. The first consistency mechanism is called snapshotting. During snapshotting, when a transactional update happens, the HTAP system creates a copy of the transactional data to the analytical replica. Snapshotting happens every time transactional will, the transactional workload updates a row or tuple in a column. The second consistency mechanism is called multi-version multi concurrency control, or MVCC. In MVCC, instead of replacing the old data in a tuple when updates happen, as in the snapshotting approach, the system creates a new timestamp version of the data that is chained together with an old version of the data, forming a pointer-based version change. During execution, instead of reading separate snapshots, as an uh, analytical query can simply use the timestamp to read the most updated version of the data uh, when the query analytical query starts. We evaluate the impact of snapshotting and MVCC on the throughput of transactional and analytical workloads. This plot here shows the impact of snapshotting on the throughput of transactional workloads for varying numbers of analytical queries. We compare the snapshotting-based system against a, a hypothetical system where snapshotting has zero cost. We observe that transactional throughput reduces by up to 75% when increasing the number of transactional queries. The main source of transaction loss comes from the cost of executing memory copy operations during the frequent snapshotting, which generates a large amount of data movement. Next, we evaluate the impact of MVCC on the analytical throughput from varying numbers of transactions. We normalize the analytical throughput to a system where executing MVCC has zero cost. We observe analytical throughput loss of up to 42% when employing MVCC. Such throughput loss comes from the fact that MVCC requires traversing long version data chains, which leads to expensive timestamp comparison operations and a large number of random memory accesses. Next, we study the drawbacks of multiple instance HTAP systems. A major uh, challenge faced by multiple instance HTAP systems is how to keep analytical replicas up to date. In order to maintain data freshness, multiple instance HTAP systems perform an operation called uh, update propagation, which is divided into two main steps. The first step, uh, in the first step, the system needs to perform the update gathering shipping, which collects updates from transactional threads and send them to the analytical replica. Second, the system needs to perform the necessary format conversions between transactional data and analytical data. We evaluate the cost of the update propagation in a multiple uh, instance HTAP system, uh, as, the plot, as the plot shows. Uh, we evaluate the transactional throughput for very numbers of transaction and update read ratios. We compare the transaction throughput of a system where update propagation has zero cost with a system that performs only update gathering and shipping and, the, and a system that performs the entire update propagation process. We observe from the figure that, transa that transactional throughput reduces by 21.2% uh, 21, uh, 21 during the update gathering and shipping process and further reduced by uh, uh, to 64.2% during the update application process. We conclude our analysis by identifying three major limitations of state-of-the-art step systems. First, they do not meet all of the desired HTAP properties, failing to provide high data freshness and consistency, performance isolation, and workload-specific optimizations. Second, data freshness and consistency mechanisms suffer from data movement overheads and are data-intensive, leading to a reduction in transactional and analytical throughput. Third, the system fails to provide performance isolation due to high, re high research contention at main memory. Based on that, our goal is to, uh, in this work is to take advantage of custom algorithms and hardware to address such limitations of HTAP systems. Next, I'm going to give an overview of our proposal called Polynesia. The key idea behind our mechanism is to partition the computing resources in the system into two isolated and tailored processing islands, where each island is dedicated to either transactional or analytical workloads. By isolating transactional workloads in transactional islands from an analytical workloads in analytical islands, we can apply workload-specific optimizations to each island, avoid high uh, memory contention, 
and design efficiency data freshness and consistency mechanism while mitigating data, mo mitigating data movement overhead. For initial leverage processing memory techniques to reduce data movement caused by data freshness, data freshness and consistency mechanisms. Processing memory can mitigate data movement overhead by adding computing uh, computation uh, units near or inside memory devices. Based on the, on the concept of processing islands, we propose Polynesia, a hardware software co-designed step systems, a step system. Polynesia includes tailored uh, transaction and analytical islands that include a replica of the data, optimized execution engine, and specialized hardware resources. Next, I briefly describe the main components of Polynesia. First, the transactional island includes an execution engine tailored for transactions and a replica of the data. The transactional island is designed to sustain high transaction update rates. Thus, it uses, conversion, conver, con, it uses conventional multi-core CPUs with a deep cache hierarchy, since transactional workloads benefit from such CPU organization. Second, the analytical island is implemented inside the logic layer of a 3D stack memory device. The 3D stack uh, memory device connects layers of DRAM banks with a layer of logic using high throughput through silicon vias or TSVs. Vertical partitions of the 3D stack memory is called a vault. We place hardware resources inside each vault of the 3D stack memory, including an execution engine tailored for the analytics and a replica of the data. The analytical island is designed to provide high uh, read throughput. Thus, the analytical island leverages simpler process memory cores that can mitigate the data movement caused during analytical processing. We co design algorithms and hardware units that can efficiently maintain data consistency and, uh, and data freshness in our analytical island. Next, I'm going to describe the design of our consistency and data freshness mechanisms in detail. We start with your data freshness mechanism, which implements the update propagation uh, process. Recall that to maintain data freshness, the step system used to first grab the transaction updates and ship them to the analytical replica, and second, it needs to apply data uh, formats uh, co uh, conversions prior to applying the updates to the analytical replica. So first, we start with our update gathering shipping mechanism. Our update gathering shipping algorithm has three ma major steps. First, for each thread in the transactional engine, Polynesia stores an other update log for the queries performed by the transactional threads. The first stage is to scan the per thread update logs and merge them into a single final log where all the updates are sorted by the commit ID. The second stage is to find the locations of the corresponding column in the analytical replica associated with each update log entry. You observe that this stage is one of the major bottlenecks of the update gathering shipping algorithm because of the fields in each tuple in the transactional islands are distributed across different columns in the, in the analytical island. Since the column size is typically very large, finding the location of each update is very time consuming. To overcome this, we maintain a hash index of the data on, on the column row key and use that to find the corresponding column for each update in the final log. The final step is to ship these updates to each column in the analytical replica. You observe that the second and third step of our algorithm generates a large amount of data movement and accounts for 87% of its total execution time. In order to accelerate our update gathering shipping algorithm, we design an, a new hardware accelerator called the update gathering shipping unit. Our accelerator has three major ma um, building blocks. First, it has a merge unit, which is responsible to scan the update logs from transactional threads and merge them into a single final update log. To do so, the merge unit uses a three-level comparator tree. Second, it has a hash lookup unit, which is responsible to find the target locations in the analytical replica for a particular transaction in the, in, the, in, the uh, in the final log. To do so, the hash lookup unit decouples the hash computation from the hash bucket traversal using a front-end finite state machine, a probe unit, and a reorder buffer. This allows to issue concurrently hash lookups, thus maximizing memory bandwidth utilizations. Third, it has a cop unit, which issues read and write comments to fetch the hash bucket from a memory and to send transaction updates to the analytical replica. The cop unit has multiple fetch and write back units, which allows to issue multiple memory access concurrently. Next, I describe the overall idea behind uh, the update application process. Its main goal is to perform format conversions and apply updates to the analytical replica. 
Transactional and analytical workloads benefit from different data layouts due to their respective competition patterns. In our relational databases, the transactional workloads store data in a row-wide format, where a row represents I entering the database and a column represents different features in the database. On the other hand, the analytical workloads store data in a compressed column-wide format, where each column stores several entries for a given feature in the database. In order to apply transactional updates to the analytical replica, the system needs to first convert the data from the row-wide format to the column-wide format and reconstruct and recompress the column dictionary uh, used for, uh, for compression. Next, I describe our update, uh, update application algorithm, which is designed to take into account the, the processing memory characteristics and constraints. Our algorithm initially builds a sorted uh, dictionary for only the updates. Once the update dictionary is constructed, we now have two sorted dictionaries, the old dictionary and the update dictionary. We merge these two into a single dictionary using a linear scan operation. We also maintain a hash index that links the old encoded value in the column to the new encoded value. This avoids the needs to decompress the column and add updates, eliminating data movement and random access while reducing the number of dictionary lookups required. Finally, we construct the new compressed column by using the hash index and the new dictionary to find the encoded value for each entry in the column. We design a hardware implementation of our algorithm called the update application unit and add it to each in-memory analytical island. The unit consists of three building blocks. First, our sort unit uses a 1024 value by tonic sorter whose basic building block is a network of comparators. These comparators are used to form a bitonic sequence where the first half of the sequence is monolithically increasing and the second half is decreasing. Second, we use a hash lookup unit to parallelize the column compression process and a merge unit uh, to merge the old and new dic uh, dictionaries. Our hash lookup unit and merge unit have a similar design as the one in the update gathering shipping unit. Now I'm going to describe our consistency mechanism. Our consistency mechanism rely on a combination of snapshotting and versioning to provide data consistency for analytical queries. For each column in the analytical replica, there is a change of snapshot uh, where each chain entry corresponds to a version of a column. Differently from snapshot, Polynesia does not create a snapshot every time a column is updated. Instead, Polynesia first marks the column as dirt, then Polynesia creates a snapshot for the column if there are any dirty columns and no current snapshot exists for a given column. In this way, Polynesia avoids long version, versions change as in, in the MVCC mechanism. To accelerate our algorithm, we employ a hardware accelerator that can do fast memory copy operations, which is, a, which is similar to the COP unit we designed for the update propagation mechanism. The COP unit has multiple fetch and write back units to issue concurrently memory access to main memory, a tracking buffer to track outstanding reads to the RAM and to trigger writes assume reads complete, and a hash index used to accelerate the read lookups into the tracking buffer. Finally, we describe our analytical engine. Efficiently executing queries depends on three main, main design decisions. The first one is how to we do data layout and data placement. The second, the second one is how to do task scheduling. And the third one is how a physical operators as a scan and merge are executed. As prior works have shown, the execution of physical operators of analytical queries can be accelerated by using processing memory techniques. However, process uh, memory performance is going to be suboptimal without proper data placement and task scheduling mechanisms that avoid process memory constraints. Thus, we design novel data layouts and data placement and task scheduling policies for our analytical engine. We start by describing our data placing strategy. The main problem related to data placement is how to partition analytical data across different vaults of our, of our 3D stack memory, since that impacts the bandwidth available for our analytical engine and the area and power available for the process memory cores. Assume, for example, you want to partition four different analytical columns into four vaults in the 3D stack memory. There are three main approaches to do so. The first approach, in the first approach, we can lo locally partition each column to, uh, to each vault. Thus, a column is going to be entirely contained within a single vault. However, since each vault has a fixed area and power budget and contributes to a fraction of the total main memory bandwidth, this approach limits the area and power, power and bandwidth available for the analytical engine inside the vault. 
Second, we can distribute all of the columns acro all, across all of the vaults. However, this approach can lead to inter-vault communication, which increases main memory access latency and reduces main memory bandwidth. Third, we propose a high vector approach. This high vector approach creates groups of vaults called vault groups and place the columns across a single vault group. This approach increases the available bandwidth area and power compared to the local approach and reduces inter-vault communication overheads compared to the second approach. We invite you to check our paper for more details on our analytical engine design, including our task scheduling heuristics that uses a pool-based task, assi uh, task assignment strategy and how we, ex we execute physical operator inside our analytical engine using a uh, top-down volcano uh, execution model. All of that is in our paper. Next, I'm going to provide some overview of our evaluation results. In order to implement Polynesian, we adapt previous transaction and analytical engine with our new consistency and data freshness mechanism. We then use the Gen5 architecture simulator to simulate the hardware component of Polynesian. We open source Polynesian in your Git, uh, GitHub repository. We compare Polynesian against a single instance system with snapshotting, a single instance system with MVCC, a multiple instance system uh, equipped with Polynesian's new algorithms, and uh, the same system uh, with a uh, uh, main memory device that can provide a high main, main memory bandwidth and an ideal system where transactional workloads are run in isolation. We evaluate the transactional and the analytical throughput for different number of transactions normalized to the ideal system. We make the following observations. First, while the single instance with MVCC is the best baseline for transactional throughput, it degradates analytical throughput by 63% due to its lack of workload specific optimizations and efficiency consistency mechanism. Second, Polynesian can provide 91% the transactional throughput of the ideal system due to its custom process memory uh, logic for data freshness and consistency and reduction on resource contention and data movement um, uh, traffic. Third, even though the multiple instance system with high bandwidth memory is the best software only baseline, it still provides uh, uh, low analytical throughput compared to the ideal system due to higher contention at the main memory. Polynesia improves analytical throughput compared to the multiple instance system with high main memory bandwidth by 63%, which is due to a reduction on the data movement supported by our custom hardware units. To conclude, Polynesia provides 1.7 times the transactional and 3.7 times the analytical throughput of prior work HTAP system, systems while achieving all the three desired uh, properties of HTAP system. We also evaluate the energy consumed by Polynesia and our baseline systems while executing transactional and analytical workloads. We broke down the energy consumed by the CPU, caches, interconnects, and DRAM. We observed that Polynesia consumed only 0.4 times, 0.38 times, and 0.5 times the energy of a single instance system with snapshotting, the single instance system with MVCC, and multiple instance system um, uh, overall. This happens because Polynesia reduces a large fraction of power, uh, uh, of the uh, large fraction of the power hungry of cheap DRAM accesses. We conclude that Polynesia is an energy efficiency HTAP system redu reducing energy consumption by 48% on average across prior works. We invite you to check our paper for more evaluations, including real workload analysis, the effect of our updated propagation uh, and consistency mechanisms, the effect of our analytical engine, how Polynesian performs with large data set sizes, and our area analysis. All of that is in our paper. Next, I will conclude this talk. Many applications today need to perform real-time data analysis, meaning that they need to execute data analysis with the most recent version of the data. Such applications often use a hybrid transactional analytical processing system or HTAP. A HTAP system should provide data freshness and consistency, workload specific optimizations, and performance isolation. We extensively analyze the state of the art HTAP systems, and we observe that they fail to achieve all of the three HTAP properties. Our key idea to solve such an issue is to define the HTAP system into processing islands, one for a transactional and another for analytical workloads. Each island has a set of optimized hardware resources and algorithms. By enabling a process islands, 
We perform workload specific optimizations to transaction and analytical workloads while providing performance isolation. We leverage our key idea to implement Polynesia, a novel hardware software code design and step system that implements custom algorithms and hardware to reduce the cost of data freshness and consistency in each step system and exploit processing memory to alleviate the data movement caused by analytical workloads. We extensively evaluate Polynesia against three state of the art step systems, and we observe that it increases transactional throughput uh, and analytical throughput by 1.7 times and 3.7 times on average and reduces energy consumption by 48%. Thanks a lot for listening. And again, you can check our paper in the QR code linked below.